class, God. We thank you for this hour, this moment to worship you, to adore you, to call out your name, to lift you up, God, to rightly divide your word, God, to sharpen our sword, to be ready and able to fight the good fight of faith, God, to lay aside the sin and the waste that so easily beset us, to let the entrance of your word usher in light, light where there is darkness, light where we don't understand. And so we just ask you, to show up and be who you always are. God, bring in the student that is hungry. Bring in the student that needs hope. Bring in the student, God, who may be hopeless, who may be hurting, who may be broken. God, who may be in despair or grief or in darkness, God. God, I'm praying for just such an incredible move of your spirit that where there is a need for healing and restoration and recuperation, God. God, you said, how shall we hear without a preacher? So touch your preacher, your teacher, your servant, who loves you more than life and breath itself, God. Bless the students to receive and every heart to open up. We pray it now in the mighty name of Jesus. Let everybody who love God say amen. Amen and amen. 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 Everybody say amen. I'm so glad to be back. I'm so glad. Did y'all miss me as much as I missed? I missed you, Alfreda. I missed you, Keisha. I missed you, Precious. I missed you, Dwayne. I missed you, Pooh. I missed you, Sherry. I missed you, Bertha. I missed you, Butterfly. I missed you, Lynette. I missed each and every one of you. I missed you, Lori Dooley. And so listen. I'm so glad to be home. Can y'all hear me? Did y'all miss me? Y'all know I need, I need. Yeah, we missed you. Yeah, absolutely. 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 I was gonna say I need yeah. conversation. Y'all too quiet. <laughs> But thank you so much for being here. We are grateful that you are here for Bible class because um, you could have been anywhere in the world. And we are just grateful for all of the things that he has given us to do in this class. And so we welcome you and we honor your presence. The only thing we ask you to do is please don't let this be the last time that you join. Please make sure you come back on a Sunday. You come back Monday through Friday for our morning fire prayer that you make your way here. And when you get here, make sure you always post how we can pray for you, how we can cover you and your family. And then please don't ever watch alone. Always gather your family, invite your friends, post this on your platforms, on your different pages, text it to somebody and let them know to come on in and be a part of it. Join us for Bible boot camp every Sunday after church, Sunday school before the church. And then Monday through Friday, we are here for morning fire where we wake up and we just come and get our Jesus. We start our day with power because we have found that it makes a difference. Some of us have tried to walk away. Some of us have tried to run away, but listen, we can't go far. We are addicted to Jesus. I got anybody addicted to Jesus with me. Somebody say, I'm addicted to Jesus. I'm addicted to I'm Jesus. Addicted I'm addicted to Jesus. Listen, this morning being Wednesday, we had our kids on. Our kids gather every Wednesday for the kids edition of Morning Fire. Today was amazing. Boy, the babies just never stop blowing me away and blessing my soul and showing their own growth in the word of the Lord. And we began to talk about today what happened after the resurrection, what happened after the resurrection. And so I want to get into that word. I'm going to do a little review because there's a whole lot of you who weren't here. And so before we get going even further into the class, I just want to make sure um, that I answer your questions because whenever I've been gone for a minute, I always like to come back and answer questions of those that you are here and um, just welcome everybody. If you didn't get a chance to put um, your prayer requests in the chat, please don't forget to do so. Please don't forget to do so. So listen, I was sharing with the family today a lesson that I began to teach this past Easter for uh, Resurrection Sunday. 
And I said that it was such a deep and profound lesson that I would be breaking it down during the course of our morning fires. And then in uh, on tonight, in particular for Bible class, answering some of your questions and taking us even deeper. Um, you know, when people just rolling over at 630 in the morning, it's only so deep that I can go before people start crying, going, oh, it's too much. It's too much. And so get your notebook and get your Bible. Why come to Bible class if all you're going to do is multiply? task through the whole thing. You ought to slow down. Somebody say, get somewhere and sit down, sit down and focus, sit down and focus. Thank you, Patsy Bry. I'm addicted to Jesus too. Thank the Lord. Adrian said, Lord, overwhelm us with your presence. Listen, if you want the Lord to overwhelm you, like Adrian okay, said, God, that's right. If you want the Lord to overwhelm you, you got to make sure you are sacredly focused on God. And so do me a favor and give him sacred focus. Now, I'm going to start off with 15 minutes, Lord, hold our time, hold our time. I'm going to start off with 15 minutes of Q&A because I have been gone for a couple of weeks. Some of you know I went to a couple of funerals, uh, multiple things have been going on. And so, um, and speaking of that, next Wednesday, I am teaching a Bible class online for another church. And so I'm going to invite you all there. I will give you more information for those of you in that time zone. You will love the fact that Bible class next week, West Coast time will be 4 p.m. East Coast time, which will be 7 p.m. And so I'm teaching a 7 p.m. East Coast class next Wednesday. And no, I'm not teaching them. And then us, I'm teaching all of y'all together. And so... <laughs> So y'all make sure y'all are there early next week. And if you cannot catch it early because you're at work, you are gone, you are busy, make sure you come in and catch the replay. Make a note. Bible class next week. Go, go ahead, Edwina. What is your question, ma'am? It's Jay. Oh, hey, Jay. Hey, my uh, question is like, when you go to heaven, do you get to reside with your family or are you just going with God and like you're going to praise and do all of that. Okay. You, who, who did you say asked you that? I asked my mom that. Oh, okay. So let's, let's backtrack. From the Bible study. That's a great question, Jay. Jay's question again is when you go to heaven, do you get to reside with your family or are you just up there with God? So, Jay, let's backtrack our way into the answer for that. Do you know who gets to go to heaven? Do you know who gets to go to heaven? Yes. Who? People that serve God and that believe in him, live, live their life for God. People who believe in him. We, we go by faith, so we know that. So if I said, do I get to see my family, it would be... Um, it would not be true to the truest sense of the world than only those who have faith in Jesus Christ. Why? Because he said, no man comes to the father, but by the son. So only those who have faith in Jesus Christ will be in heaven. So only those in my family who have faith in Jesus Christ will be in heaven. Yet there was in the Bible, and, and because this would take more time for me to show it to you than we have, there's a scripture in the Bible that talks about um, a woman who marries multiple brothers and um, one died and then she married the other because this was the Old Testament tradition. And she married another and she married another. And they said, well, whose wife will she be? And Jesus said that in heaven, we will not marry people. So I will say to you that in light of that scripture, all of the dynamics of will I see my family don't know when, don't know how, don't know in what role, because it's all about us being a bigger family as our mind should expand down here, that I am a part of the kingdom. I'm not just a part of my biological family. I am a part of the kingdom. We are in the family of God because of our faith in God, that when I get to heaven, I know that we will be recognized because the Bible tells me in Luke chapter uh, 16, 17, somewhere right around there, it tells me about the man who dies, goes to heaven. And when the man is looking up from hell and he sees this bad beggar Lazarus in heaven, Jade, he recognizes him. So will we be recognizable? Yes. How we will be with families? 
I believe based on what God has said about us being the body of Christ, I'm not going up there to be somebody's daughter or granddaughter or niece or nephew or husband or wife. I'm going up there to be a child of God. So all of us being the children of God will see each other, be around each other. But will we think of each other as um, there's my brother, there's my mother, there's my sister. We will see them, we will recognize them, but will that still be the role that they occupy in our life? We'll all be the children of God and bloodline will have nothing to do with it at all. Does that help you? Does that help yes, you? Yes, that oh. makes sense. All right. Yeah. All right. Are you yeah. sure that clear it up? All right. Well, amen. I, I, and I, I want you to the same thing, but you said it so eloquently. <laughs> well, hey. Like, like, yeah, this is my daughter, Jane. Oh, yeah, I've been waiting for her to tell me. So I like that. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much, Jay, for asking your question tonight. Go ahead, Akaya. You are next. You are next. Come with it. What is your question? So I recently saw something. So does it say how Peter died? Um, in the Bible, because I know some people say that he was crucified, but he was crucified upside down. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's why some people wear, I guess some people get it confused where they have like the the necklaces and they say it's like St. Peter's like uh, cross where he didn't want us to die in the same manner as Jesus. Mm -hmm. So it's like an upside down cross. So I was just kind of confused. Okay, so there are books, Akaya, that give uh, historical times of the early uh, New Testament church. And so we find out a lot of things. We find out a lot of different things about uh, what happened in the first century church, even what happened um, before Jesus even came um, into the world incarnate um, in the flesh. And so the, the crucifix, let me just actually put all the disciples. There are multiple historical books that tell us what happened to all the disciples. Well, I won't say all, to most of the disciples. And what we find out is that John, John, the one who wrote the book of Revelation, that John, that John is the one who did not, he died naturally, whereas the rest of them suffered. One was boiled, one was beheaded. Um, Peter, as you said, the, uh, the, the historical, um, I could say old wives tale, but that's not the word I want to use. But the historical book has been uh, noted that he was crucified upside down by choice. Um, and so there are other books. Is it in the Bible? No, because remember, there's a certain point in time that the biblical historical record stops. But historical records, just like in our own history, like even our history of the United States, how do we know what happened with the first president, George Washington, the 16th president, Abraham Lincoln. How do we know these things? Franklin Della Rosa, because of historical writers. So just like there were historical writers in our nation, in the civil rights movement and all of these other things that some of us were not around to see, how do we know these things? Because they were written in historical books and that's where that comes from. And so your question would be, made broader by saying, um, what does this mean to me to know that they stuck to their testimony to death? They never, not a single solitary disciple ever renounced Christ and said, I lied. He, he's not the savior. He didn't walk on water. He didn't speak to the winds. He never raised the dead. He didn't uh, show back up after the resurrection. This shows us that the fact that they stuck to their testimony about Jesus all the way to their death, however they died, um, is important. The other thing is this whole teaching that we have out in the world that you'll never go through anything, you'll never suffer anything, you'll never have a tear, you'll never have a pain, you'll never lose anything, you'll only get, get, and get. You'll have all this money, you'll never have debt, you'll never lose anybody. That's not Bible. And there's nothing that will line up to make that be Bible. And so it's important for us to see that and to realize that. So I hope that helps you because when we start looking at different things, we want to know what am I looking for? What am I looking to learn? And what is the bigger lesson for me to learn and all of that? Does that help you, Akaya? Yes, thank you. What made you, what 
made you want to know or what confused you, shall I say? Because I was watching um, like the Super Bowl and like this rapper Ice Spice, she had a necklace on and people were saying that it was demonic because it was upside down. But some people say it was St. Peter's cross where he was crucified upside down. So people were saying it was demonic because I guess it's like upside down, like the cross, it was satanic. So that was just curious. Hmm. So this rapper that you're speaking of, the bigger question, I'm so glad the Holy Ghost had me ask you what made you ask that. The bigger question for us to consider, Akaya, is why would I wear a cross with Peter on it? True. Yes. You get what I'm saying? I wouldn't care if he was sideways or diagonal. I wouldn't care if he was, you know, backwards and not forwards. I mean, at some point, what did Peter do for me on the cross that got me anything? You get what I'm saying? Amen. Yeah. So sometimes we let the world run with stuff and ask us questions and get us to debate. And what did this mean? The bigger question is, is, is demonic if she wore it for, I don't even know why I would ever want Peter on a cross. I mean, I just, I, I'm, I was trying to think of what would make me want Peter on a cross. I can't think of a reason. I don't want Peter on a cross. I don't want John in a boat. I don't want Paul sitting in a Sanhedrin. The only one who died for my sins is Jesus. That's it. That's all. And so, Callie, stop. That's it. And that's all. And so therefore, for me, the only person attached to the cross. Now, remember, there were thousands of people who were crucified in Roman times, but only one of them got up from the dead. And that's Jesus. That's the only one. Callie, stop. That's the only one that I am absolutely. And, and, and for those of you who know what I have said about um, a cross, now I do have a cross that has Jesus on it. But I remember um, just hearing this somewhere back when I was younger, that my thing was that I'm not wearing a cross even with Jesus on it. And, and not, I shouldn't say I'm not. I was feeling this, that there was no reason for me to wear a cross with Jesus on it. But the simple fact that Jesus is not on the cross anymore. And so when I even put Jesus on the cross, he... He'd been off the cross for over 2000 years. <laughs> so for me, I don't mind wearing a cross and I do have a cross. Like I said, with Jesus on it, it was passed on to me after my dad died. And so it has a sentimental value to me. Um, it doesn't have any kind of, I'm not, Jesus is still on the cross. When I thought that, you know, I was younger, but my whole thing is nobody else on the cross is literally has any meaning for me. Not that not not anybody, not anybody. Does that help you? Definitely. Thank you so much. All right. And Akaya, with you being such an up and coming, like soldier, champion, giant of the faith, I want you to always go, hmm, what am I missing? And I always want you to look behind the headline, behind the story. Okay. Okay. All right. That was an excellent question. Anybody else? Anybody else have anything else before we move on to our lesson? Because I want to get into this lesson because y'all was feeling something this morning and y'all was feeling it strong. Y'all was feeling it mighty strong. And so I want to get into this. And if you didn't get a chance to ask your question tonight, y'all know that I will do this again with you. Not next week because we're doing our East Coast class so week after next. Um, but I do want to try to get in two or three questions every week so that as you guys read stuff, see stuff, think about stuff, study stuff, you always have the platform. Now, every now and then we do classes that are completely 100% open mic. And so you guys are always welcome to ask those questions all the time. So I hope that helps. All right. So now let's get in and I'm going to give you the few moments of a review. So I brought up the fact that all my good church going life, I have heard the phrase that he got up with all power in his hands. I believe this to be 100% true 
that Jesus got up with all power in his hands. Let me say this one more time. I believe this to be 100% true. I believe for a lot of people, the way we have said it, the way it has been taught, the way he got up with all power in his hands, we may have to say, hmm, could there be a remnant of people who are misunderstanding this very statement? This statement has been said um, every Easter I've ever heard it, uh, for sure. Every time the resurrection is discussed, um, just about every time somebody has preached, I hear the phrase, he got up with all power in his hands. And I brought up the fact that um, on this past Easter, um, as I was preparing my message and I, I was like, Lord, I don't want to miss you. I want to make sure I'm preaching what you want me to preach. And, you know, what is it that you want me to preach about Easter um, that may bring new revelation, bring new wisdom, whatever the case may be? I want to make sure that I don't miss you and that I get everything that you want out of this lesson. So therefore, um, when uh, I'm in this conversation with my good savior, the way that I am when I'm talking to my Abba, I hope he's your Abba too. Um, he said, well, what do you know about Jesus? And I said, I know that he got up with all power in his hands. And he said, did I? Did I? And I was like, what? He was like, did I? And I said, of course you did. And he said, hmm, where's that at in the Bible? It's like, what do you mean? Where's that at in the Bible? Surely it's in there. Surely it's in there. Surely it's in there. And he said, okay, go ahead. I'll hold you. Look it up. And I was waiting for a scripture that told me he got up with all power in his hands. Now I challenged those of you this morning who were in the devotion with me this morning, where I told you I would unfold this one message over the course of three days. Did anyone find a scripture that says he got up with all power in his hands. Did anybody find that as a scripture? Or anybody? Anybody? I'll hold, I'll wait. I'll hold and I'll wait. I'll hold and I'll wait. Nobody? Nobody. Nobody has a scripture. Nobody has anything. Y'all just quiet. Y'all don't care. What? <laughs> so let me tell y'all, because y'all mighty quiet, because I know what that means. Most of y'all didn't look it up. Okay, so the Bible says, and Jesus came and said to them, all authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. He said this after his resurrection. This is typically known as the scripture that most people are referring to, that he got up with all power in his hands. One of the things that I then brought up was, did we assign a time and a space to this scripture that Jesus didn't assign to it? Did he ever say, I didn't die with all power? Do we, by essence of always saying he got up with all power, lead some to believe that there was a time that he was ever without all power? Let me say it to you one more time. Am I saying that Jesus did not get up? No, I am not saying that. But what I'm saying to you is it could be a place and a time where we have um, allowed the traditions of men to nullify the word of God, to nullify the word of God. What am I talking about? Most of us can tie that phrase back to somebody we heard preaching. I have said it a thousand times, a thousand times. I've heard it a million times. But where is the scripture? And if he indeed did not only get up with all power, can I find a scripture that says he died with all power? Is there a scripture, scripture that speaks differently? Does anybody know of a scripture that says that um, basically there was power when he laid his life down and there was power when he picked his life up? Can anybody think of a scripture that says anything close to that? Anybody? Hmm. 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 Pastor Don, I don't get why we're talking about this and in, in, in tying to the resurrection. Let me say this to you. Let me first and foremost give you the scripture. I gave it to you today and I want you, now that you are wide awake, 
Write this down in your Bible. John chapter 10, verse 17 and 18. He says in verse 17, I lay down my life that I may take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of myself. He said, I have power to lay it down and I have power to take it up. And my question was, if he had the power to lay it down and the power to take it up, then when was he without power? Why would this even matter? Could it be that we are living in a time where we have an enemy that likes us weary, that likes us broken, that likes us to stay weak without us ever realizing that he gives strength to the weary and he gives strength to the weak. Look at this scripture here in Ephesians chapter one, verse 17 through 21. He said, the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the father of glory, I pray that he may give you the spirit and wisdom of, of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. He said, this means that the eyes of your understanding will be enlightened. He's talking to believers and he's saying, there's a place where you can love God, trust God, believe God, but not understand everything. He said, to have the eyes of your understanding enlightened means that you will know the hope of his calling. You will know the riches of the glory of his inheritance, and you will know what is his exceedingly great greatness of his power towards us who believe. What if when we started saying that Jesus got up with all power in his hand, we started making people doubt the power of God because we start saying that when Jesus died, he didn't have power. He was weak and ineffective or, or with a limited amount of power or whatever the case may be. Now, I don't want to go back and teach all of this morning's lesson that I taught. I do want you to go back and look it up. But I wanted us to have the ability to say, God, give me the spirit of wisdom, open my eyes and help me to understand the exceeding greatness of your power towards those of us who believe according to the working of your mighty power, which you wrought in Christ when you raised him from the dead. Here is the link. He says, if you don't understand the power of God, you will not understand the same power that got him up is at work inside of you. It is at work inside of you. And if the enemy gets you or I to believe that there was a time where this same power is not inside of us, then we won't get that strength in our inner being. Listen to what he said a second time in, in Ephesians. I want him to end strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being. If I believe that there are limitations on the power of Christ, me or anybody else, me or a thousand somebody else's, could it affect the way that I see the power that I have inside of myself? What if I question whether or not I ever have the ability to not be weak, to not be weary, because I don't understand that the same power that raised Christ from the dead dwells inside of me. It dwells inside of me. If you don't get this revelation, if this doesn't make sense, it's not a different power. It's the same power. But if your understanding of that power is that it was limited, it was short, it wasn't almighty, it wasn't omnipotent. What does the word omnipotent mean? Come on, this is Bible class. What does that word mean? Okay, we're going to start from the back. The all-knowing? Mm -mm. So which word means all-knowing? You close, Akaya. Somebody partner with her, help her out. Which word means all? Omniscient. Omniscient. Omniscient, Akaya, is he's all-knowing. What if I said he's everywhere? He is everywhere. He's all-knowing. What is it? Omnipresent. 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 So all-knowing. He knows everything. There's nothing that is outside of the mind of God. Somebody type this in the chat for me. Come on, I'm gonna need Facebook and YouTube. You, you catch up, you type in the chat, you get involved. And those of you in class, remember this is, this is an interactive class. So omniscient, all-knowing, everywhere. 
There's no place that he can't be. There's nothing outside of, of time or he's not, he has to operate when he created time. He's everywhere. He's omnipresent. So now if I say he is all powerful, what is that word? Omniscient, all knowing, omnipresent, everywhere. What's the word for all powerful? Omnipotent. 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 So we've heard these words, maybe not quite understood these words, but if I believe in the phrase, he got up with all power, that I don't believe he was omnipotent before the resurrection and we celebrate Easter because he became all powerful. Did he ever tell us that? That's going to be the next class. I'm going to make sure we come back. And so I want y'all to, here's your homework. Let me give you the homework early. Why did Jesus die on the cross? We celebrate him dying on the cross, but why did he die on the cross? I want you to look at that as we get ready to prepare for that, because I want you ready for what that brings with it. This brings to us, if I say that he didn't have the power on Good Friday when he died, that he didn't get the power until Easter Sunday, Resurrection Sunday, when he got up, then what is he talking about when he said, I have the power to lay it down and I have the power to take it back up? Hmm. If I say that he got up with all power, then what did he die with? Did he die with a limited amount of power? I asked the question this morning, maybe we need to take a look at when we first begin to see Christ. But we got to deal with the biases, the bondage, and the baggage that we put on somebody even telling us something that goes against, it may seem, what we've always heard. Look at this scripture here in 1 Corinthians. Paul said, my message and my preaching were not with wise and persuasive words, but with a demonstration of the Spirit's power so that your faith might not rest on human wisdom or in some translations say human words, but on God's power. Do you have room in all that you've ever heard from everybody who's ever preached to you to let God be God? to let his word be alive, to let his word be powerful, to let his word be everything? Or are you willing to let the cross be emptied of his power? Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter one, he said, Christ did not send me to baptize, but to preach the gospel, not with words of eloquent wisdom, lest the cross of Christ be emptied of its power. Do we empty the cross of Christ of its power when we stick wholeheartedly to something I always heard bishops say, always heard pastors say, always heard elders say, but I can't find a scripture for it. Does mm -hmm. God call me to look deeper? Does God want me to go further? How many of you say, I want to know the truth? Come on, somebody say, I want to know the truth. I want to know the truth. <laughs> This is what is meant when it's, oh, no, yeah, this is what is meant when it says the traditions of men nullify the word of God. <clears throat> Why would the Bible say that? Because God wanted us to know the thief will come in among you. This is what Paul told the church. He will come in among you. He will come in among you like a wolf disguised in sheep's clothing. He comes to steal, kill, and destroy. <clears throat> Somebody tell me. Why would he want to steal our power? <clears throat> Why would he want to steal what we believe about the power of Jesus? Why would he want to steal our power? Or why would he want to steal what we believe about the power of Jesus? So we lose all hope. Say it again. So that we will lose all hope. So we will lose all hope. And that, okay, great. That's where we ended with this morning. So we would lose our hope. What else happens if he steals with the power of Jesus, the true and living? If I believe that, because I had somebody said, what difference does it make? But if I believe that surely he did not get all power into resurrection morning, but he always had power, did he already steal it from me? And if the truth is that the truth, I shall know the truth and the truth shall set me free. 
Could it be he wants me to stay in bondage? Not only to not knowing what Jesus is capable of, but not knowing what I'm capable of in him. Hmm. The Bible said in Galatians chapter one, I'm not trying to win the approval of people, but of God. I'm not trying to win the approval of people, but of God. If pleasing people were my goal, I would not be Christ's servant. Choose ye this day who you want to please. Having this conversation among the elect of God, there are people who would say, why would we need to have this conversation? Because if there is a deeper truth, like he said in Ephesians chapter one, where you and I get to know him better, we get to know his power better. We get to be <coughs> free <coughs> because we knew the whole truth and nothing but the truth. Why would we want to settle on a lie? Do I want to live by the words that come out of God's mouth or the words that come out of man's mouth that man doesn't based on the Bible? Y'all come off a of mute. Talk to me. Come on, y'all come off of mute. Which one do you want to live by? Hmm? <laughs> Whoever that is, I can't hear you at all. Your, your phone is muffled. Um, I was saying, I want, I want to believe what the mirrors say. I don't know. I don't care what man say. Man, you know, that's why in the Bible, the Lord says, study yourself so a fool because, you know, everybody don't have a right. And some people just don't have a right because maybe there's a lack of mouth and not studying itself. But I want to know what the word say. If it ain't in the Bible, then uh, I'm not, not going to believe it. You can show it to me in the Bible, then, you know, I'm with it. But other than that, I'm good. Amen. Hey man, anybody else? Go ahead, Dwayne. Oh no, I was just I'm, I'm listening. I'm I'm taking it all in tonight. What do you, What are you thinking of what you heard so far? Well, uh, it's it's quite interesting, especially about the, the part about him uh, dying without you know not having all power in his hand, you know, and and being raising back up with that. Um, I never even thought about it. Be honest with you, I, I always heard that same statement, and I trusted it to be that. You trusted it to be that. Did you ever yeah. look up a scripture to see if it was? And I never did. I never did. Yeah, a lot of us. I have just heard it, and I just went with. I, I accepted it, and that's 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 where this is helpful, and this is making it allows me to. Look, go deeper now. Right. I'm thankful for that. You know, I'm thankful for you. Because here's the question, Dwayne. If I took hook, line, and sinker, something that may be misleading, did he right. did he get up with all power? Yes, but he died with all power. With all power, exactly. He died with all power. Yeah. Now, I had a, a, a couple of people who have been in the kingdom for years, four or five different decades, say different things to me about it didn't matter. This is not something we need to discuss. Could it be there are other truths that I have based on a saying more so than on scripture. How important is scripture to me? So I asked the question, could it be that when we buried Jesus in the tomb, did we bury his power with him? Hmm. Think about that, Dwayne. Did we bury his power? Because everybody told us he got up with all power. So I believe that he didn't die with all power. Did I believe that he didn't die with all power? Because I crucified his power when I crucified him. What are you talking about, Pastor Don? Hmm. Let's think about this for a moment. Right. Dwayne, where do you believe that Jesus went on Good Friday. Where do on you believe? Mm -hmm. So they crucified him. He died on the cross. Where did he go? He went to be with the Father. He went to be with the Father. How do you know that? There's a scripture, I believe. Um, well, no, maybe I'm wrong. Let me, go ahead and explain. Where, where, I want where, okay, so let me let me come at to come to come to you another way. And it's not a trick question because I'm no, truly have, trying to get to what you have been taught and why you believe it. Where did they put his body on Friday, Dwayne? In the tomb, correct? In the tomb, 
Okay. So the average person, Dwayne, believes that on Friday, Jesus went in the tomb, period, right. point blank and period. Right. Okay. So here's, here's the question, Dwayne. I asked you, where did you think he went? And you said to be with the father. If they put his body in the tomb on Friday, he lay there all day Friday, lay there all day Saturday, woke up Sunday morning. Why did you say he went to be with the father on Friday? Well, I, I, my, my thought would be that, I mean, the body is not Christ. The body is just the body. Hmm. Okay, so yes. listen to what Dwayne said. The body is not all of Christ. The body right. is part of Christ. So right. now I gave you guys the analogy today that if your grandmama die and if your daddy die, your mama die, your sister die to make you feel better at the funeral, we're going to say to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Why don't we believe this with Christ? Because the average believer, the average believer that's been in church for years is going to tell you, Jesus, he was in that tomb and everything that is connected to Jesus went in that tomb with him. But Jesus said on the cross to the thief, he said, this day you will be with me in paradise. Exactly. This day. He didn't say, I'm sending you to paradise. He said, you're going to be with me. He was talking to him about Friday. So if he told the thief, this day you will be with me in paradise, where was Jesus on Friday? In paradise. In paradise. Because exactly. to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Where a lot of us begin to struggle with this is this whole thought of Jesus' spirit and Jesus' body. Jesus' spirit and Jesus' body. So now when I come and say to you, we put his body in the tomb and his spirit went to paradise will be to be with the father. For some of you, that sounds foreign or confusing, but yet I can stand over your mama or your granddaddy or your husband or your child and say it and you go, yes, because we put in his body in the grave, but their spirit is in heaven. We have taken a scripture that Jesus gave us and applied it to everybody but Jesus. Right. Come on, anybody having some aha moments? Anybody having some aha moments? Do I do I have any lights and bells? Yeah. Come on, anybody getting it? Now that lights are bright, lights are bright. They bright, Lord. They bright. They bright. <laughs> they bright. I, I, I want I want you to see this. So now I asked the question this morning. My question was, when did Jesus first come to exist? The answer I was given this morning for sake time, I'm just going to go right into it, is, is Jesus in the Old Testament? Is yes. Jesus in the Old Testament? This was the question that I had for everybody this morning. I said, when was the, what well, my actual question was, when do we first see Jesus? And the answer that I was given was in Bethlehem was when he was born. And I said, hmm, no. is that Bible? Is that Bible? No. Okay. So now Dwayne says, no, somebody partner with him. Come on. Somebody who wasn't here this mm -hmm. morning. Akaya, you wasn't here this morning. Were you or were you? Actually, I was. You was? Okay. So I want somebody who wasn't here this morning and did not watch me preach on Sunday. When is the first time we see Jesus in all of the Bible? When is the first time somebody who wasn't here this morning and you weren't here on Sunday? Nobody? Nobody. Okay. Who, was, who remember what I told you this morning? When do we first see Jesus? Hmm? Okay. Yeah, I'll open up, that, open uh, up Genesis. Genesis. Yeah, that's where, 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 he was always there. He was always there. All right. So everybody open up your Bible. Somebody read me. Genesis. Let's go to it. Genesis chapter one. What does Genesis chapter one say? It's right there on the mm -hmm. screen. God created the heaven and earth. Okay. So in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. 
For most of our lives on the milk of the word, we always, a lot of us think this is only talking about God the Father. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Somebody turn to John chapter one, John chapter one, and I want you to read me. Let, let me just put it on the screen for y'all so that we don't spend all our time. I got it. Okay, so read it, Akaya, on the screen. Okay. Verse one. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. Pause. Was pause, pause for a second. What's the word? Who is the word, Akaya? Jesus. Hmm? Jesus. Okay, do you know how to prove that to somebody who tells you that Jesus is not the word in that scripture? Isn't it another scripture? Or in, in this one in particular? Mm hmm. I want you to notice, like you know your name. Akaya, drop mm -hmm. down for me real quick because it's going to be some people who say that was the written word. The written word has always existed from the beginning. What does verse 14 say, Akaya? Of that same scripture? John 1 14. Okay, hold on. Hold on. 14. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. Okay, so we, now we know that the word became flesh. So we're not talking about the, the written word. He said, and made his dwelling. So we are talking about a person, right? Okay, right. And then it says, we have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only son. So we know that in verse one, we say, so if everywhere you saw the word word, you replace it with Jesus. It would say in the beginning was Jesus and Jesus was with God and Jesus was God. Keep reading, Akaya. Okay. He was with? Uh, first, first two right there on the screen. Oh, mm -mm. Oh. He was with God in the beginning. Mm -hmm. All things were created through him and apart from him, not one thing was created that has been created. Okay. So he just told us Jesus created everything. And there's not one thing that has been created that was created. So now if I flip back to Genesis chapter one, where it says in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, who created the heavens and the earth? Jesus. Jesus. And your backup for that is, what scripture did we just read? John, John, one, and one. John one and one. Is that the only scripture in the New Testament that tells you that Jesus is the one who created the heavens and the earth? No. no. Give me another one. The one about the tomb? Hmm? The one about the tomb? Mm -mm. The, this scripture here in John 1 and 3 says, there, he created everything. There's not one thing that was created that wasn't created by him. So now here's what happened. You're going to get all these people that want to argue with you. All these people who say that didn't mean this and that didn't mean that. And God wasn't calling him God. And God wasn't saying that he's this. There's other people who want to argue with you about whether or not Jesus is God. So now the place I want you to take them is the next place I put on your screen. Hebrews 1, chapter 1, verse 8. Everybody turn in your Bible, underline this in verses 8 through 10. I'm going as slow as I can because I want you to see that he had all power from the very beginning. From the very beginning when he was creating the heavens and the earth. He did not wait to resurrection day to get all power. He had all power when he was creating the heaven and the earth. Hebrews 1 and 8, it says, but unto the son. So now I've established he's talking to the son. He said, thy throne, O God. What did God the father call God the son in verse 8 here? What did he call him? God. He called him God. Now, people want to argue with you that at some point, he did not have all power when he died. But yet in the beginning, God the Father called him God. How do I know in Genesis 
that God the Father and God the Son and God the Holy Spirit were all in Genesis 1. Somebody give me a scripture. Because it's going to be somebody to say, this was just God the Father, Pastor Don. Now listen, for those of you who are like your head is spinning, you got to read all of this multiple times. Watch this class multiple times. I'm going to say what I said all weekend long. This is one of those lessons you're going to have to go back and study and rightly divide and study it again. Show yourself of noble character. Keep going back to it until the revelation of the Holy Spirit makes it plain to you. So now, that for the person who says, wait a minute, I don't understand. What do you mean God the Father called God the Son God? We believe in God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. One God who manifests itself in three persons. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. We have a conversation right here in Hebrews 1 and 8 between God the Father and God the Son. Pause right here. And give me one scripture in Genesis 1 that tells me that at least at the very minimum, even though it does tell me all three, but give me a scripture that tells me it wasn't just God the Father in Genesis 1. Anybody? Is it referring, are you referring to like when the spirit of God hovers over the waters? Is that one? That's the Holy Spirit. But give me one because that just tells me that the Holy Spirit was there. But give me a scripture in Genesis 1 where I can undoubtedly say there was more than just God the Father there. Anybody? Some of y'all been through this so many times. You ought to have this down in your soul. Somebody read for me the 26th verse of Genesis 1. Oh, yes, 27? Verse 26. Uh, uh, yes. What did he say in verse 26? Then God said, let us make men, mankind in our own, in our image, in our own likeness. Okay. So you, then, okay. Yeah. Let's pause. He was okay. There you go. He said, let us make mankind yeah. in our image. Who is us? God, the father, God, the son, and God, the Holy ghost. How do I know that God, the son was there? Because I just read it in John one and I just read it in Hebrews one. And he backed it up because he said it in Genesis 1. Okay, let's do a check. Alfreda, you still up with us? Adrian, you still up with us? Keisha, you still yeah. up with us? I am. Uh, my brain is exploding, but I have a question. Yes, so, ma'am. Okay, don't laugh. So the Holy Ghost and the Holy Spirit, are you saying it's two separate people or they're the same mm -mm. person? Holy Ghost and Holy Spirit, same person, just two different mm -hmm. names. Just two different names. Okay. 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 So there's God, the son, God, the father and God, the Holy spirit. Keisha, the problem is, is people don't want us to believe some people, especially primarily the enemy does not want us to believe that Jesus is God. Uh, yes. Okay. So now when I just took you to Genesis 1 and 1, and it says in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And then you read in John 1 and 1 that Jesus made everything and there was nothing that was made that was not made by him. Then I brought you here to Hebrews 1. And he says, listen, he calls him God in verse 8. Then look at verse 9. Thou has loved righteousness and hated iniquity. Therefore, God, even thy God. He said, it doesn't take me anything from being God to call you God. Do y'all see that? Okay, let me back up. Yes, yes. He said in verse eight, unto the son, he said, thy throne, O God. Okay, so the son is called God. God the father is called God. God the Holy Spirit is called God. Now, drop down to verse 10. Somebody read me verse 10, Hebrews 1 and 10. In fact, let me just make it big on the screen so you can read it all by itself. Somebody read verse 10 that you see on the paper, on the screen. Come on. You, Lord, in the beginning laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the works of your hands. Hmm. So God the Father is talking to God the Son. And he says, you, Lord, in the beginning laid the foundation. How do I know? Let me go back and put it back on the screen. 
He says here in verse eight, but unto the son, that's how we know this is a divine heavenly conversation. Somebody say this Bible class, this Bible class, this Bible class. Bible, 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 Bible 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 learning. Amen. Yes, come on, come on. Is, is there anybody that just get tired of the, anybody get tired of the milk? Anybody get tired of hearing the same thing over and over again? And anybody ready for the deeper truths? Anybody ready for revelation? Yes. Come on, anybody mm -hmm. ready for God yes, to give yes. you? Because yes. listen, let me go back to yes. why we were talking about this in the first place. Because I told you that when Paul wrote the church of Ephesus, he said, my prayer for you is that the eyes of your understanding shall be open. He said, that's my prayer. Let me go back because some of you... Pastor Don, why are you going so deep? He said, because I want you to know God better. If all I ever tell you is God created Adam and Eve, and I tell you one day they were in the garden, and one day Noah was in a flood. If I never take you to the deep truths, if I never take you to the things that get down in your soul and down in your gut, if I never tell you the things that no enemy in hell can refute once you know the truth, why? Because it's the truth that's set you free when you know it. But if I always keep you on the milk where the enemy wants you to be, if I always keep you where you have no spirit of wisdom and no spirit of revelation in the knowledge of him, at some point, your knowledge of God is supposed to keep growing. And if you just stay on milk and you just stay a babe in Christ, the devil got you right where he wants you. And he whoops you're behind with that. He whoops your behind with that because he doesn't want you to know that Jesus wasn't just in the manger. Jesus wasn't just in the speaking to the winds and speaking to the rains and raising the dead. He wants you to think that Jesus was never in the Old Testament at all. So when did Jesus become all powerful? Was it on resurrection Sunday or did he have that power from the beginning? He had it from the beginning. <laughs> he always had it from the beginning. So I'm going to say it again. He got up with all power, but he died with all power. Wait a minute, Pastor Don. I'm getting so confused. Anybody getting confused? Anybody? Be honest. Be honest. Nope. Listen to it's the- It's becoming more clear to me. Okay. And you got to hear. And this is why I keep giving you precept upon precept, because Keisha, people will preach to you something, tell you something, and not have any word to stand it on. So Listen. Keisha, the question is, well, do I believe that there's more than one God? Nope. Nope. Because listen to Isaiah 44, verse 6. This is what the Lord says, Israel's King and Redeemer, the Lord Almighty. I am the first and I am the last. Apart from me, there is no God. Is there any other God other than our God? No. Okay. So he says to us in the Old Testament, thousands of years ago, I got all power because I'm the first and the last. There, there's apart from me, no other God. Now he said that God, the father said that in Isaiah, God, the son said, I am the alpha and I am the omega. What? Pastor Dawn, I'm feeling myself starting to get confused again. I'm feeling myself starting to get confused again. Let me put them side by side. If God the Father said in Isaiah 44 and 6, I am the first and I am the last. And then God the Son said in Revelations, I am the first and I am the last. Hmm. Could this be why Jesus told the disciples, when you have seen me, you have seen the Father. <sighs> when did power die? It never died. It never died. We buried it when we put Jesus in the tomb. We put his power in there with him. We forgot. 
wait a minute. He said, with power, he laid it down. With power, he picked it up. Wait a minute. He had power in the very beginning when he created the heavens and the earth. Hmm. He was part of the conversation. Let us make man in our image. My knowledge of God is getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Do I understand it all? No. Do, do I grab, hold to the whole thing? No. Do, do I need more? Yes, I need more. Okay. Revelations 1 and 8. Listen to this word. He says, I am the alpha and the omega, says the Lord God, who is and who was and who is to come. God the Father says, I am the alpha and the omega, the almighty. I am the almighty. That's what he says right here. I am the almighty. So now we go just a little further. And here in Revelations 1, he says, when I saw him, same chapter one, but we go down a ver few verses. He said, when I saw him, I fell at his feet as though dead. This is John the apostle talking about how he felt in front of the one he was seeing. He said, then he placed his right hand on me and said, do not be afraid. Here he says it again. I am the first and the last. Now, there are people who will say to you, this is God the father saying it again. But listen to what he said. I am the living one. I was dead. And look, I am alive forever and ever. And I hold the keys of death and Hades. So now for the person who tells you that God almighty and mighty God, the one who's speaking here in Revelations 117 is the same. You would have to ask the question here in verse 17 when he said, I am the living one. I was dead. And now look, I am alive forever and ever. Anybody who tells you that this is God the Father speaking would have to tell you when was God the Father ever dead. Light bulbs, sirens. Mm -hmm. Come on, any anybody getting light bulbs? Anybody getting sirens? Anybody going, aha, I see it, I see it. I'm getting light bulbs. Come on, there you go. If Jesus can say I'm the Alpha and Omega and God the Father can say I'm the Alpha and Omega and God the Father can say I'm the first and the last and Jesus say I'm the first and the last. And then God the Father called him God. God, your God has given you a throne. Has a, At some point we say he was never without power. But if I misunderstood it all this time, if I didn't understand what was being taught, because I've been fed just milk upon milk upon milk upon milk. Could it be more to it? Is there any place else in the Old Testament prior to the incarnate, that means Jesus in the flesh, where you would say Jesus was in the Old Testament showing his power? Where else in the Old Testament? Now, there's quite a few, but if I wanted to find a place where Jesus is in the Old Testament and I see it, can anybody think of a scripture? Anybody who wasn't here this morning, first of all, because those of you who was here this morning, y'all should kind of remember, but I know it was a lot this morning, even though I tried to limit it. But is there another scripture you can think of? Anybody? Okay, somebody who was here this morning, can you think of a scripture? Okay, so this is why we go over stuff twice. In the book of Daniel, we know the story of the three Hebrew boys. The three Hebrew boys going to the fiery furnace. It says here, these three Hebrew boys were thrown into the fiery furnace by Nebuchadnezzar. Nebuchadnezzar knows that he threw in three. Listen to what he says in verse 24. He says, the king was astonished and rose up in haste. And he said unto his counselors, did not we cast three men bound into the midst of the fire? They answered and said unto him, true, O king. We put three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in that fire. And he said, then why do I see four men? loose and walking in the midst of the fire and they have no hurt. And the form of the fourth is like the son of God. Who was the fourth man in the fiery furnace with the Hebrew boys? Jesus. 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 
So I'm not Jesus. Jesus. If, some, if somebody asks you the question again, is Jesus ever in the Old Testament? And you sit under Pastor Don. You better have an answer. <laughs> I'm be mad at y'all if y'all don't have an answer. Yeah. So, Amen. Y'all feeling me? Come on, y'all. Yes, absolutely. Yes, yes, yes. 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 This is deep tonight. It's clear. Yes. You preaching? Come on. You preaching? Come you preaching and teaching. I could. Yes. I could leave. I could leave you on milk. I really could. I really I could. Prefer, I'm learning. I could leave you on milk and you could stay with all the stuff that had made you shout, but not shift, made you dance, but not develop, taught you triumph over your enemies, but not triumph over the enemy. The enemy was hoping that you really believe that Jesus didn't give power to Resurrection Sunday. He's hoping you really believe that Jesus never started in all of history until Bethlehem. He's hoping that you keep saying he didn't get all power until he got up off the grave. But if he had all power when he died and laid his life down, had all power when he picked his life up, and now I said he had all power when he formed the world, because God the Father was calling him God. Hmm. God the Father said he created everything. God the Father said he laid the foundations of the earth. Then in the book of Daniel, the prophet Daniel shows me he was in the book of Daniel, the son of God, walking around in the fiery furnace with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Is that the only time that I know Jesus had all power? If he died with all power, he was raised with all power, how was he born? Come on, somebody. With all power. How do you know that? Because he has the... Come on. Um, it's in there, Lori. Dig it up, Lori. Dig it. He was born with, with power. He had power. He died with power. So he had to have power when he came. Okay. He never lost it. Because okay. Because God. All right. But how do you know he was born with power? Go on ahead, Lori. Say, teach me, cousin. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Y'all turn in your Bibles. Here we go. Luke chapter one. Is this too much? Y'all want me to stop? Am I choking anybody on the meat of the word? Am I choking anybody? No. Keep going. Okay. Eight. Stop. I want to be over. I want you to keep going, but we don't have to refresh. Come on, can you give it to us? Come on, you could watch it. Remember what I told you. Watch this two, three times. Remember, I told you go back over your Bible two, three times. Now, in Luke chapter one, Luke chapter one, verses thirty-four and thirty-five, it says the Holy Spirit will come on you. He's talking to Mary. Mary say, "What do you mean? I'm gonna have a baby. I'm gonna have a baby. I ain't never been with a man. I'm a virgin." He said, "Let me tell you how you're gonna have a baby." Baby. Somebody read it for me. Luke chapter one. It's on the so, screen. The Holy mm -hmm. Spirit will come on you, and the power of the pause. Overshadow. Pause, Keisha. It's pause. After he said, "You read that next part." And the what? That's okay. We'll wait on you. The Holy Spirit okay, will so, come on you, and the what? And the power of the Most High okay. will overshadow you. Okay. So listen. Jesus was conceived in the womb of Mary by what, Keisha? What did it say? By the what? By the power. There you go. Say it again. The power of who? Of the most high. Okay. So, okay. Keisha, the Holy Spirit will come on you and the power of the most high will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Okay, wait a minute. The son of God. Where did we just hear that at, Keisha? Keisha, wait a minute. So he had enough power to impregnate her? <laughs> sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> Keisha? Well, hold that thought. Yeah, yes, ma'am. We coming to that. Yes, ma'am. What did Nebuchadnezzar say? 
who who what did he call the fourth man in the fire there at the bottom of Daniel 325? The son of God. Okay. And here in Luke 1, what is the one who is inside of Mary's womb going to be called? The son of God. So when did he have all power? On Resurrection Sunday, when he was born, when he died, when he created the world? Yes. The power of the Most High will (laughs) overshadow you so that the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Jesus, who already existed millennia before Mary, (laughs) millennia, always had all power. This is where we pause and I remind you what your homework is. Why did Jesus die? Why did Jesus die? I want you to look that up. I want you to study that. I want you to be ready for us to have the strongest conversation about that. Not next week, but week after next. Because remember next week, I told y'all I'm teaching a special class. Y'all going to be a part of it with me. And we're going to all be in it together. Y'all going to be with me together. I'm so excited about this. I I can't see me not teaching next Wednesday because that's just how excited I am. Wednesday night with y'all. Y'all hold your horses because I might. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. But here's my you thing. You got me excited, PD. And you should be. And you should be. Because here's the thing. When he said all power, or as some translations say, authority in heaven and earth has been given to me, we have read this scripture to believe that this power meant after he was raised from the dead. But he always had the power had from the mm-hmm. very beginning. Mm. Pastor Don, what difference does it make? It makes a difference because if I sit up here and I believe that he didn't have power, he had limited power, then I will believe the same thing about my power. Mm. Y'all getting that now? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Amen. All right. I'm Paul. Go ahead, Akaya. Um, I was looking up different scriptures, and can you also like partner it with uh, Colossians 1, 15 and 20? You absolutely about- can. About him creating. Read it so everybody else can hear it, because Paul is telling us the same thing over and over. Read it, Akaya. Okay. You want to start at 15 or 16? You can start at 15 and end at 16. Okay. The sun is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For in him, all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and un- in- invisible, whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities, all things have been created through him and for him. Amen. And you partner that with Hebrews 1, with John 1, and Genesis 1. They're all saying the same thing. Good job, Akaya. Good job, Akaya. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Anybody else? Any more questions? Because I want to pause. I want to answer all your questions. Okay, tell me. Somebody say, come back and get me. So, what what you thinking, Alfreda? Oh, my God. This is so good. I was just telling my mother. Okay, she was talking to me when we went over this part, so I know you did. Now, we have heard this forever, and I heard somebody preach this Sunday. (laughs) <laughs> about those things, the death, hell, and the grave. This is too crazy. I'm so embarrassed. But because you know, you when you hear this stuff, you just never think to go really research it out. Mm-hmm. That scripture in Revelation is that because I haven't found any others. Is that the only scripture where it says talk about the keys to death, hell, and why do we get to, where do we get the notion that he went to hell to get those keys? What do we get the question? <laughs> Funny you should ask, (laughs) because in 1 Peter, Alfreda, it says, for Christ also suffered once for sins, the righteous for the unrighteous, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit in which he went and proclaimed to the spirits in prison because they formerly did not obey when God's patience uh, waited in the days of Noah while the ark was being prepared 
in which a few, that is eight persons, were brought to safety. So people read 1 Peter 3, Alfreda, and they say, this means that he went to hell on Good Friday. Now, again, going back to what I said to you about us assigning a time to a scripture that scripture does not assign a time to. Is there any mention that he went to hell and preached to these spirits in prison on Good Friday or when he died? The answer would be no, no Alfreda. How do we know that? Let's go back to your number one evidence of this, the one I gave you earlier. When he told the thief on the cross, today you will be with me in paradise. Did he say, you go to heaven and I'll be right back. I got to go to hell real quick because I got to finish the work of the death, the burial and the resurrection of me. Or when he said that the work of salvation was finished, Alfreda, when he said it is finished, did he not mean it is finished? Mm -hmm. Where that comes from, Alfreda, is something called the Apostles' Creed. Look it up. Mm -hmm. You'll be able to look it up. And everybody else who wants to know where that comes from, why do I always hear people say that he went to hell? And Alfreda, you said you heard this on Sunday? Well, I heard, not Sunday, I heard someone preach it on Saturday, and they actually demonstrated Jesus was running and getting people. Uh-huh. You know how we do. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Exactly. So I'm going to say <laughs> it again. There's no Bible scripture that says that. We just hear it the same way that we hear that he got up with all power in his hands, and we never say where that came from. When people tell us he went to hell, we don't say where that where that where you get that from. Where is that at in the Bible? Show me, cause I want to see it. I want to know if that's real and that's the living word of God. And if you can't show it to me in the Bible, and so for those of you who want to know, uh, I think one of the reasons I always tell people who want to teach the Bible or preach the Bible um, that seminary. Um, can be awesome is because given the right teacher, this this is really important for me to say that given the right teacher, you will have a teacher that will challenge you to pull down the things that are not Bible. And there were multiples from my, a couple of my professors. One was that everybody had to speak in tongues to be saved. I'll never forget that search we had to do. And the other one was Jesus going to hell. There is no scripture that says either. But we preach and we teach things that are not the word of God. And so when we have heard all of these years, he got up with all power in his hands. There's no scripture attached to this. Some people, as I told you, will attach Matthew 28 and 18. But it didn't say that he got up with all power He said he has all power. Man has added the he got up part. And since man added the he got up part, we say it at every sermon. We say it at every lesson. We repeat it over and over and over again to most of us think that it's Bible. I gave the analogy this morning that it's just like when people tell you God won't give you more than you can handle. That's not a scripture. (laughs) It's just something that we have heard. And it goes back to what I said to you earlier in the sense that we have men who are preaching with persuasive words. Hmm. But listen to what Paul said. My message was not with persuasive words, but with a demonstration of the Spirit's power. So that your faith might not rest. My faith, your faith, it's got to rest on something. Do you want it to rest on the words of your bishop? Or do you want it to rest on the words of God? The power of God. Hmm. Could it be that the enemy doesn't want the Lord to be your rock, your fortress? 
He does not want him to be your shield or the power that saves you. He wants you to think that that power was limited. He wants you to think that that power has a start date. And that's why I told you that on last year, the Lord told me to preach the power of the resurrection. But on this Easter, he told me to preach resurrecting the power. I said, Jesus, what do you mean? He said, because as long as people don't understand that the power that I got Jesus up with lives inside of them, that power never lost his power. We say that about the blood, but we don't say it about Jesus. Do y'all see that? <laughs> we say the blood never lost his power, but people have fought me since Sunday to say Jesus never lost his. So now we worship the blood more than we do the savior who shed his blood for the remissions of sins. Hmm. Should it be so? Should it be like that? Could it be that the enemy says that if you ever learn the power, you'll learn how wide and how long and how high and how deep is the love of Christ? Why? Because it takes power to understand that. But if I make you question the love because you question the power, then as soon as you don't think that he loved you, then you'll never think that he died for you. You'll think that you weren't included in that. Don't you see that if he can get us to question the power, he can get us to question everything? I'm going to end the way I began. When did he get all power? He said, I have the power to lay it down. I had it on Good Friday. And I have the power to take it up again. And I had it on Sunday morning. I always had the power. I never lost it. You buried it. And I never told you to do so. My prayer is not that you make this lesson about something that it's not. Because he absolutely was completely omnipotent when he got up. But he was omnipotent when he died. How do I know that? Because how did he transfigure himself? How did he speak to the winds? How did he speak to the sea? How did they say, what manner of man is this if I have assigned to him that he didn't have power? How did he call Lazarus forth from the grave? Hmm. How did the hem of his very garment have power if he didn't have power? until resurrection morning, then how did he do every miracle that he ever accomplished? Hmm. Somebody say things that make you go, hmm. Mm. This is what Amen. makes you study to show yourself approved. Because you'll start saying, if I miss one thing, did I ever miss anything else? If I miss one thing, did I ever miss anything else? And let me, trust me, I trimmed this lesson because I was going to go into this whole thing to make sure y'all understood a theophany and a Christophany. And I said, mm -mm -mm -mm, I'm really going to lose them. That's going too deep. Mm -hmm. Don't do it right now. <laughs> but I just wanted you to know the truth because my Bible says, you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. Set you free. When the devil misquotes this scripture to you, he tells you half of it. He says, the truth shall set you free. That ain't what that scripture say. He says, you shall know it. My job tonight was to make sure you knew it. And that by knowing the truth, it will set you free from years and years and years of what could be on some lives. Some people always understood this, always got it. Jesus was all powerful. He was never without power. However, some people thought, I didn't really think he had all power till he got up. Because that's what my pastor and my bishop, Pastor Don always said that. Minister Marshida always said that. I don't know a pre preacher that can't tell you that they have said it. Why? Because we heard it. And not many of us said, is that the whole truth and nothing but the truth? And by saying that, am I making people think there was a time he didn't have all power? 
I hope that you make up your mind tonight that you're not trying to ruin the approval of men, but of God. The pleasing people is not your goal. And even if this truth and knowing this truth is what's going to set you free. It's, if it's contrary to what your favorite preacher in the whole wide world has preached, you want to know what God says because you don't want to empty the cross of its power. You want it. You want it. And you want it to keep his power because you want your faith to rest on his power. I love you. And my prayer is that sharpening your sword tonight, you would know that the biggest thing that the enemy is is scared of is that you would understand that he has given you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. And nothing shall by any means hurt you. What? Did he just say if I understood his power, I could tread on serpents and scorpions? Maybe this is why the enemy been trying to limit the power of Jesus so he could limit the power of me and of you. Is this making sense to anybody? Yes, ma'am. Yes, it has. Yes. 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 yes, it has. Does anybody feel like the emoji yes. with the mind blown? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Anybody? Yes, that's half of my week is flipped. <laughs> I'm, yes. I'm just saying, if mine wasn't on with some yes, really ma'am. good got to be glued, I could feel it too. I could feel it too. Tell me what tell me what you're thinking, what you're thinking out there, how this is making you want to dive in deeper. What you thinking, Betty Horn? Tell me what you're thinking out there, Vanessa. Tell me what you're thinking, because y'all didn't heard this. Tell me what you're thinking, Pooh. Tell me what you're thinking, Auntie Regina. I want to I want to know how this is sitting with you. Bertha, been in church all your life. How is this? sitting with you. Once you realize, wait a minute, death and the grave doesn't have the final say. Wait a minute. Jesus didn't start in Bethlehem. Wait a minute. He didn't get up with all power. He died with all power because he was born with all power because he created the world with all power. And the same God that was walking through the Red Sea is the same one that was in the lion's den. And the same one that was in the lion's den is the same one that was in the fiery furnace. Jesus didn't just show up in Bethlehem. He's God. (laughs) Woo, Jesus. Come on, I want to know what you're thinking. I want some of them people. Tell me what you're thinking, Betty. Tell me what you're thinking. Tell me what I want to hear well, you. I'm, I'm so glad. Wait a minute, Vanessa. I'm, I'm a I'm Betty, and then you you next. A bit of... Okay. Okay, hold on, because she was coming right before you. Then you go next. Go ahead, Betty. Can y'all hear me? I can hear you. Uh, head, mouth, surgery, yeah. Oh, okay. No problem. Go ahead, Vanessa. We praying for you. Go ahead, Vanessa. Y'all pray over Mama Betty. She had mouth surgery at the dentist today. Go ahead. Oh, my God. Um, I'm glad that I caught the little bit that I did catch because I always question with um, the uh, Hebrew boys being in the fiery furnace. Mm-hmm. And how Nebuchadnezzar was saying that he put up the hottest fire, right? And so he looked in there and he saw four people and one looked like the son of God. And I always wonder, how does he know that was the son of God? How did he know that? Mm-hmm. But it finally clicked from the beginning. From the beginning, Jesus was there from the beginning. Amen. 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 Watch the whole class, Vanessa, so you can write the notes, take the notes, research. Like I told Keisha, this is absolutely something that if you don't go over it again and again, it will feel like it's drowning you and breaking you. So I want y'all to get that the enemy is the one that wants you powerless. He is the one that, listen, let let, let me put the scripture one last time and we're going to pray out. He says, and nothing, behold, I've given you power 
to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. He want to hurt you by what you don't know, what you don't understand, what you don't question. Because as we talked about this morning, if Christ be not risen, if Christ be not risen, We are of all men to be pitied because our faith is worthless and we are still in our sins. My prayer is that this means something incredible to you. Like you really, really show enough get it in a way maybe you never got it before. I don't want a worthless faith and I must understand that he got up with all power, but I understand the power that he laid his life down with, the power that he loved me and created me with and formed the whole world with, power to heal me and hold me. And if that power is that strong, then it's the same power I need for my marriage, to be a parent, to open a business, to figure out life and get through the chemo. I need that power. Hmm. Hebrew boys in that fiery furnace couldn't bring themselves out. And I don't know about you, but like them, I need Jesus to get in my hot situations with me because I have no power to keep me from being burned up. But I decree and I declare to you today that the son of God will get in your fiery situation and walk around with you and bring you out. Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, how we love you, we honor you, we praise you, and we thank you. We thank you that you're amazing, that you taught this lesson, God, by your power of your Holy Ghost, that you wanted us to learn, that you wanted us to believe, that you wanted us to know you better by letting the eyes of our heart be enlightened. Teach this to us a thousand times until we get it and we don't question it, God, to where we get it as student and we can teach it as teacher, God, to where our faith rests on the power of your Holy Holy Ghost. Man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. God, I pray that the words that proceed out of your mouth will have the ultimate weight with us, that they're bigger than anything else we ever hear anybody teach or preach, explain, or completely twist around, God. That your word, God, when we find it in your word, it is breath to us. It is our heartbeat to us, God. It is everything. And I pray, God, that we don't let the enemy take away our power over him, our power to walk on serpents, God, to tread on scorpions, God, because your resurrection power lives down inside of me. Forgive me that I didn't understand it. Forgive me that I question it, God, but it is absolutely inside of me. And I get it now. It's not a different power. It's the same power. And if I come through this Easter season, this resurrection weekend, I come through Holy Week, then Lenten season, and I don't understand the power that you got yourself up to give me, then I miss the whole purpose of it all. I want to get it, God. I may have to read it over and over again. I may have to study until I'm not confused. I may have to pray and pray and pray again, but I want to get it. I pray this truth is embraced and that us knowing this truth truly does set us free. God, if there's anybody right now that does not know you, does not know your word, maybe they're already a disciple, but they don't know you better. I prayed it right now. They will say, I love you and I love your word. And I want to belong to you. And I pray that they would surrender. Put a one by your name if you're giving Jesus your life for the first time. A two if you recommitting, saying, I can't make it without Jesus and his power. I thank God for what he did for me. I pray that that's your prayer tonight. Start all over in him if you need to. Put a two by your name because you've been backsliding and you're tired of it. You don't want to be prodigal anymore. Come back home to his loving arms. Or put a three by your name, by his, by by your name in the chat. If you just want a church home, 
You want to learn word like this all the time. And you're out here without a covering. There have been 34 people to give their life to the Lord. And I pray that you are number 35 for this year, 34 in just the first three months of this year. You want to be the first one of April? Tonight is your night. Why? Because tomorrow is not promised. Start all over in him. It's the greatest thing that will ever happen to you. When I hear word like this, I can't go to a church just because the choir is amazing. Just because I love the mimes and I get goosebumps when my favorite soloists sing. I need word. This devil ain't playing with me and I don't want to play with him anymore. I want power to understand how long and how wide and how deep and how high the love of Christ is. I need a pastor that teaches me like that. I need a pastor that teaches me that I have power over serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. I need a powerful teaching that teaches me whether I'm in the valley or on the mountaintop, God has given me all that I need. I pray for that right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you for Bible class. Let us get sweet sleep, amazing sleep. Let visions of not just sugar plums dance in our head, but visions of chapters and verses dance in our head and all over our lives because of the way that you taught us. God, I don't want just milk. I want meat. I want meat. And so I thank you, God, for each and every person that ate and ate good tonight. And they're so happy that they got to taste and see that you are good. God, I thank you for Jackie. They said, I want to be a member of the hope. I love the way you're feeding me and teaching me. We welcome her here, God, into the family. She's been a member for so long, but God, she makes it official. And so we celebrate you inside of her. We celebrate your truth and your light and your power inside of her. Thank you in the mighty name of Jesus for what you say and what you do and the fact that you keep on adding, adding to your kingdom. Thank you, God, for new life in you. In the mighty name of Jesus, everybody that celebrates Jackie's placement in the Hope Church, everybody say amen. 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 Jackie, you've been coming to this ministry for months now. You've been taking what you're learning. And when you drive in your Uber, you've been making <laughs> sure that souls are getting saved. <laughs> you're making yeah. sure that hope is being given. <laughs> And now you have a whole army that locks arms with you. We love you, baby. It is our Thank privilege you so to much. welcome you here officially. Thank you. Thank you. I feel welcomed and I feel loved. I bless all of you. Amen. Thank you so much, Pastor Don. Amen. Jackie, call me after Bible class tonight, and we'll talk about what the next steps are. Some of you already know uh, what it takes to be in the body, to what it takes to uh, do the next things that come next. And so I pray uh, right now that you'll be praying that Jackie just keeps on doing all the things that it takes uh, to have those next things happen. I pray that you were so blessed tonight that you come back again and again and that you'll meet us here on Sunday. Oh my God. As we keep teaching, we started this morning teaching the kids what happened after the resurrection. I want to make sure you know all those parts. And then like Jackie and all the other new members, if you want to join us for Bible boot camp immediately following service on what does that mean? That means there's some basic stuff in the Bible. How do I read it? How do I study? How do I pray? You can come learn them in Bible boot camp. But the next six Sundays immediately following service, we would love to grow with you in Bible boot camp. But we certainly hope we get to see you in Sunday school or even more importantly, worship service itself. And then Monday through Friday for morning fire. Come and be a part of us getting up every day in the presence of the Lord in prayer. I love y'all. I pray that this class was powerful to you. I pray that it was amazing to you. 
I pray that you come back again and again and again and again. And you keep bringing your kids on Wednesdays that you send your men to join the men on Thursday nights. And then on Friday nights, we continue our series. You don't know my story. Oh, God just keeps doing so many great things in this ministry. What does that mean? There's always a word. And so whether it's Wednesday night, Thursday night or Friday night. Monday through Friday morning or Sundays early, early for worship. You join us. If you can't get to your church or you don't have a church, consider this good ground for you to watch and pray and grow in the word of God. I love you and it is my prayer that I hope that if this word has been a blessing to you, that you will bless it. That if the Lord lays it on your heart to sow a seed of support, that you will sow a seed of support as you hear the Lord leading you and guiding you and all the other activities that we do, that you'll pray about what you can be a part of, what you can come out of town for and be with us, but that you will sow a seed that we keep on doing the great work of our father. We are about our father's business. We believe there's nothing like it and that we're blessed to be a blessing. And so, so many different ways for you to give. And if you want to give, you can give. That information is right there on the screen. You can give accordingly as you see. Scan that QR code. Go to our website, thehopeone.com, and give safely and securely with your credit card or debit card because you say this kind of teaching has to keep going for it people who don't know the word, people who want to be trained up in the word, people who don't know how to fight the good fight of faith. They must learn the word of God this way. So let me partner with the father to make sure this kind of teaching keeps going again and again. I love you all. And I certainly hope you will share this word on your page because somebody needs to know that he laid his life down in power and he picked it back up again in power. I love me some y'all. Were y'all blessed today? Were y'all yes, blessed? Ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, yes ma'am. Yes, I am blessed to y'all measures. Thank you, Pastor Don. And thank you, Hope family. I love you guys. Yes. I love y'all too. Now, listen, I don't, I don't try to give you this much, this fast, this quick. But every now and then, you got to put on your meat-eating dentures. <laughs> And you got to make sure that you get everything that the Lord has for you. And so share this word on your page. Somebody's going to be blessed by it. Thank you, Cousin Dara, for being here. Thank you, Tammy and Patsy and Rochelle and Andre. Thank you, Joyce. Thank you to everybody who's watching on YouTube and on Facebook who shared. Everybody in the war room, please don't go to bed without sharing this on your page. Go and share it so somebody can find it and they can be blessed by it. I hope I get to see you in the morning, tomorrow morning, thankful Thursday. And I'm so thankful that you and I are here together. I love you for being here in Bible class, and I hope that you were blessed by it. I'll see you in the morning. God bless everybody. Everybody in the war room, say goodbye to everybody on Facebook and YouTube. Love you all. Good night. Good night. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night. Good night. I'll see you in the morning. Good night, I love you all. Good night.